So we've got this regulatory environment. Things have changed quite a bit. And uh, what happens in terms of enforcement? What's the expectation there? That's a great question. And for a while, we really didn't know. The EO, the EO itself doesn't address it. The guidance itself doesn't address it. Um, the, the task force has been issuing some frequently asked questions on their website. And they recently did clarify that if there's a contractor who's not in compliance, the agency should try to work with the contractor to get them into compliance. But if they are not taking concrete steps to do so, that the agency should terminate the contract. So I think that that is, you know, that's the only consequence that has been explicitly spelled out. Um, I think there could also be an impact to your contractor rating. I think there are lots of potential consequences there. You know, if you have a contract terminated because you didn't comply with this guidance, I think it's going to be hard for you to get another contract. Um, but at least as far as we know so far, there aren't any monetary penalties or fines. That may be something we see in the future. And I think you can anticipate, given the um, central importance to the current administration of uh, these new uh, guidelines, that enforcement will be um, could could be um, significant. So we focus quite a bit on federal government contracting, but the executive order also talked about healthcare facilities and employers over 100 employees. What uh, how are, how are they impacted? So last week on uh, November 5th, OSHA issued a set of emergency temporary standards that unlike the um, guidelines that we've been talking about so far are applicable only to private sector workplaces where the employer has 100 or more employees. It does not apply to federal contractors or subcontractors. It doesn't apply to healthcare workplaces or healthcare support workplaces. And it doesn't apply to uh, workplaces with uh, fewer than 100 uh, employees. Uh, the, there's some interesting um, uh, features of this in terms of how do you get to 100 employees or not. And uh, it's worth paying attention to for those businesses where their workforce count might be near that, above or below, depending on the, the, the time of it. If, if uh, an employer does not have 100 employees or more now, the ETS is not applicable. At any point in time during the um, effective period for the ETS, if you get more than 100 employees, then you're bound by uh, the ETS. If you drop below 100 employees after that, you're still bound by the ETS for the remainder of the time that it's in, uh, in effect. Uh, it applies to all US, work, all US workplaces. And for, uh, for a single business, you aggregate all of uh, all of the work sites into sort of one count. So it's cumulative. It applies to uh, full time employees, part time employees, does not apply, apply to independent contractors. Uh, some interesting um, um, some interesting quirks. If uh, for those of you who use staffing or temporary employees, um, the, you only count uh, the employees that are actually yours. Temporary employees are counted by their the staffing agency or, or the um, employer. Uh, and for those of you in, um, in uh, business sectors like construction, uh, when you're on a work site that has multiple employers and multiple employer employees aggregated together, you only count your own employees for, for that particular time. So what about 1099 independent contractors? How are they treated? Yeah, they're not, they're not covered. It, it's, it strictly is what we don't know, but it is a strictly a traditional employer-employee relationship. So, you're, so if you're your really, entire headcount. It's your entire headcount, full and part-time employees, all U.S. locations. Um, and if you're at 100 or more, you've got to comply with the ETS. 100 or less, uh, it's not out. And, and when you say full or part-time, that means even somebody who's a quarter FTE, full-time equivalent employee, would still count as one. There, there is no distinction, at least under the, um, under the um, ETS as it is so far. Understand that this is subject to public comment and will be finalized at some point after the next 30 days. I think it's a 30-day public comment period. So there could be some changes in how this is done. Uh, in some areas, the standard seems to be a little bit squishy. But uh, I think if you're looking to try to figure out whether uh, the uh, ETS applies to you, it would be better to be more inclusive rather than not in terms of uh, you know, who you're counting as your employees. Mm -hmm.